Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite real estate niche website, thelandgeek.com. Com. And this week, even though the weather's nice, even though the swell is fantastic, I was able to corral the hardest working man in real estate and startups and whatever else he's doing today. Duran Frazier, ReserveLand.com, LandHub.com. What's up, buddy? What is going on? You know, Mark, I really appreciate those introductions because it sounds like I'm kind of a big deal. And in reality, I'm kind of not a big deal. You know what's funny about that is Anchorman 2 is coming out. So let's put on our Ron Burgundy voice. Oh, I love that guy. By the yeah. way, I got, to, I got to meet him and Lauren got to take photos of him about a month ago and two months ago. It was really cool. He's a cool dude. We, uh, yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a cool dude. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and, yeah. I think uh, – I, I just hope the movie's not disappointing. I have a feeling it's going to be. <sighs> you know, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if it is, but I just – you know, if it is, we could just, you know, punch each other in the ovaries or something like that. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> – I'm going to punch you right in the ovaries, right in the, right in the baby maker. Oh, boy. So, hey, tell me, tell me what's going on with you. I know you're feeling good. Uh, what's your health tip of the day? I know you like to start with that. Tell me about this lemon thing you're doing. Uh, well, it's not really something I've been it's, that I'm that I just started. It's something I've I've known. There's, so there's a lot of things that I research, uh, and of course, for some of the listeners that don't pay attention to some of the or haven't listened to all the podcasts, which there's lots of them. Um, I have gone through some health challenges in my life. Uh, one was an antibiotic reaction at the age of 30, which was uh, pretty severe. Uh, loss of bladder control, um, some brain issues. Um, and some some uh, some nerve issues in the body, and so I did a lot of research on a lot of a lot of different things about health and what's good for you, bad for you. But in reality, all these, you know, the way the way you think, the way you the way you create ideas and businesses in your head and and do different things, um, that's a mental thing, and that kind of goes back to your health because if you're not healthy mentally, it's hard to kind of focus and and uh, be creative, um, and that's kind of my belief. So one of the things that I did is. Kind of figured out what 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 do I need to do on a daily basis? That's sort of an organic, uh, an organic place for me to be. That I'm not taking medication. I haven't touched medication by the way in I think seven years, six years. So wow. I haven't put I haven't even put a Tylenol in my mouth in seven years, which is pretty crazy. That's crazy. Um, so anyway, um, what I do and I get headaches, but I just deal with them. I mean, I try to figure out why why I've got the headache, and hopefully I can solve the problem. If it's water, if it's not drinking enough water, if it's you know, I'm, I'm pretty sensitive to light, so if it's light or something that's causing the headache, I'll try to you know figure it out. But um, one of the things I've been doing is taking lemon water. So uh, Costco or maybe Sam's Club, maybe maybe similar, but uh, there's these bottles of water, and they're organic lemon water, uh, or, or I'm sorry, organic lemon juice. And what I do is I pour a little bit of that organic lemon juice in, inside my water. And basically, I, I, from what I've read and researched, uh, what, uh, lemon, lemons are really helpful with your pH balance. And there's, uh, there's, there's two directions. Either your pH balance is right on, right spot on, which I don't know if it's a six or seven. I don't know what the number is, but, um, and then either you're acidic or you're alkaline. And so you want to try to be closer to alkaline than you do acidic because your body doesn't, um, your body, um, acidic, I think is, uh, very very bad for you and does not is not helpful in fighting diseases or sicknesses in the body. So, so I just try to stay uh, pH balanced and I drink I drink lots of water and uh, with and I actually one of the things I recommend too is uh, another reason I do it is because um, I I have a re reverse osmosis system in my house which cleans all the water um, but it also strips away a lot of the minerals so that that lemon kind of helps because it actually puts it way too alkaline and so that's I had I had acid reflux for about uh, about a year and then I started doing the lemon water um, and I, I it's bizarre but literally I healed myself by in which most people go ah you got to go to the doctor get it checked out and who right. knows I don't know why I'm, I'm going to try this this lemon thing yeah so See, I try it. yeah right, right now i'm really into the whole caffeine oh, thing really? with the bulletproof coffee i feel great in the walking treadmill what's which, the bulletproof coffee what's that one i told you it's it's the tablespoon of grass-fed butter two tablespoons of coconut oil 
mixed together with a good coffee, and uh, it's fantastic. I'm not sure if you told me that, unless I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, yeah. Go to go to bulletproofcoffee.com. This guy Dave Asprey, uh, Tori told me about it. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Tori's like this paleo guy, but all right, let's get started with the show. Yeah. All sorry, right. guys. We can't talk yeah. all about health the whole time. Yeah. All right. right. So you just closed a nice deal. Let's talk yeah. about that deal. Okay. Um, let's see. I uh, bought several properties about six months ago in different areas of uh, in the state of Nevada. Um, I actually, was, I went on a little spending spree. Um, you know, little when and when you have when you have some cash in the bank um, and you're and you're wise and you understand different locations around the U.S. and you've already bought property in these different counties, you it's a little it's pretty easy to understand what you're buying and. So I went to a couple auctions, or actually, I think three or four of them, uh, in, a, in a couple of month period, and uh, I bought some stuff. And I, there was a there was a piece of property that I picked up um, that w- I think my closing price was around twenty two hundred bucks, uh, maybe two grand on the property. And uh, and it was a nicer one. It was a nicer parcel. It had road access, utilities, the property. Some it, beautiful- it was five acres, right? Correct, five acres, five beautiful acres. views, um, and I sold it for thirteen, just right around thirteen thousand dollars, with a thousand dollars down, uh, and I carried back a note for right around three thirty a month for three years. So um, the property will be paid off uh, in about three and a half months. I love it. And no credit, no credit checks. No credit checks whatsoever. No credit so, checks. So um, and they closed it today. Uh, correct. Let me ask you yeah. something. How, how long does it take you to complete your paperwork? To get all, you know, to get the land contract out, to get the promissory note out, to get the purchase agreement out, your property report out. How how long does it actually take you to physically? Because I know you're not outsourcing this. Um, honestly, uh, no. Honestly, you really want to know? No, lie to me. I love uh, it. Maybe sixteen minutes. Okay, that's how long it takes me. Fifteen minutes, exactly. Yep. I said sixteen, so I'm I'm one I'm one minute slower. Than you. I got to catch up. Do you use DocuSign? I don't use DocuSign. Okay. What do you? How do you? How do you have them sign then? So I send the contract out. I, I email the contract to them. Tell them to print two copies. Right. I tell them to sign or notarize both copies. Have them send them back to me. I will then execute both contracts. One will be for myself. One will be for them. Send it back in the mail. They have a fully executed contract, an original contract, and and so that's the way it works for me. I'm going to save you a lot of time. Why is that? Not really. I'm, I'm going to save you a little bit of anxiety, like. Sending out that contract and then waiting for them to sign it and send it back. Okay. To okay. All right. So docusign.com. Okay. You both, this is how I do it. Okay. You both digitally sign. Okay. What, so do you, what do you pay a month? I don't know, 10 bucks. That's a lot of money, Mark. I mean, you I know, know I know. You're, you're, I bet you're spending more than that in postage because I know, right. I know you, you're a big spender. You're probably sending it out FedEx. I guarantee, because you can, you, if you're closing 10 deals a month, it's going to pay for itself. Yeah. I'm if you're not doing any kind of volume. But F, just FYI, I'm not closing 10 deals a month. <laughs> yeah, but I am. Okay, I'm so. <laughs> just so go ahead. So anyways, go ahead. Okay, so. If, but if you're closing one deal a month, it makes sense. Yeah, well, yeah. If you're closing a deal a month, it makes a lot of sense. Even and even like personally, yeah. like you, you make a PDF, I can digitally sign things. It's great. It's yeah. legal. It's, it's all set. Yeah. So you get a copy. They get a copy. They digitally sign. It takes two seconds. They can do it on their smartphone. You can do it on your smartphone. Yeah. It's, it really is great. And then I don't have to worry. Like, oh, are they going to send it back? You know, where's the paper? Everything's saved digitally. Yeah. Um, I love DocuSign. And That's there's awesome. free there's free ones out there. Some of my students are using some free ones. I can't think of the, the name of them if you don't yeah. want to do DocuSign. I just find DocuSign very, uh, you know, customer-centric. It's easy. They've got an 866 number if you need support. Um, you know, it kind of, it's, you know, you get what you pay for. It's yeah. very robust. I love it. That's awesome. And that's not even my tip of the week. Yeah, that's that's what's even more incredible. Yeah, you're, so, you're you're just full of information, Mark. All right, well, there you go. That's why I'm the land geek. So, uh, all right, so so you that that deal, that's a pretty good margin on that deal. How'd you uh, how'd you figure out your pricing on that? Um, so I, I you know I, I I again I'm a little different. I don't, Mark. You 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 are the king of using tools to kind of you know figure out what what's is what things sell for on eBay or what things sell for on Craigslist or whatever. But for me, I'm just I'm gosh I'm kind of old school like that, which is really weird because for me I'm like Mr. Digital Guy. Right. I just like I like to solve those financial problems myself. And then I, I, we talked about it in, in an earlier podcast. I um I'm not a big fan of interest because I think that interest rates are a little deceiving 
And if you think about it, um, if you put zero percent, it's a great marketing tactic. I, I agree. I agree. We're not going to. I'm not going to argue with you on that. But if I can get interest, because I want to have flexibility, right? Yeah. So okay, in your example, like if if that was my property, I wouldn't sell that for anything less than probably you paid five. I didn't pay five. I paid two. You paid two, so I'd I'd want. I'd probably want on a five acre like that utilities. I'd probably want nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd probably go lower, easier on the terms. I wouldn't need a thousand down, but maybe but, 500 down, but I'd, I'd sell it maybe low interest 5% because then I can go to somebody that wants to make 10% on their money and I can sell that note for 10 grand. Right. And get my, you know, make my return. Yeah. But you don't do that. I, but I want the flexibility if I want, if I needed cash to have it. But if you, but, it, but, but in theory, so here's the flip side, right? In theory, if you've got a note that's, 13 or let's just say 13 or 14 grand right. and there's 0% interest and, and it's, it's the note, you know, the notes and the notes in place. Right. Um, hang on one second. I'm not sure if you get that feedback there, but I apologize. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting any feedback. Okay. I apologize. Anyways. Um, um, if you, if you have a $13,000 note, uh, in reality, you could sell that note for, you could still get eight or nine grand for the note. Right. It's, it, there's still some interest at some level. Like if you're selling it for eight, you're selling a discount for 30, you know, you can create in your mind some sort of percentage on, based on what you're selling the note for. So it doesn't matter if it's 0% or 900%. Does that make sense? Like, no, I, I'm, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Right. So my, mine is more of a tool or a tactic on the sales side to make it attractive to the buyer. Because buyers are like, zero oh, percent. This is amazing. These guys are unreal. And I'm, and what they don't realize is that, okay, look, if I bought it for two and I sold it for 10 and I put, and I put a you know a twelve percent interest over three or four years. I'm getting that three or four grand. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so absolutely. And, put, you know, and a two thousand dollar property selling on ten grand over three years. That's a good. That's a good return. No, no. It's, it's, it's look. It's a huge return. Either way, you may you're, you're making out huge. Let me ask you: Are you incentivizing that customer to pay you quicker? No, no penalty for prepayment, cash discount, or no? Do you, um, have, that, do you have that discussion? Yeah, of course. There's no prepayment penalty. Okay. And then what, about, I don't, what about I don't cash give discount? A, I don't give I don't give a cash discount. I do. Well, you do, but then again, you tr you charge six percent interest on some deals. Some deals I don't. Yeah, but but on the flip side, you you. I mean, so again, these are all marketing tools that Mark and I use, and it's a strategy that we in our brains go, okay, it, you know, how can we attract the buyer? And every lot's different, right? Every property is different. I mean, on a thirteen on a five thousand dollar lot. You know, to you, you're going to get a different buyer than one that that's paying twenty grand for a lot, and so you you have to be you have to get the minds of your buyer, and you have to right. understand why are they buying the property. Um, if it has utilities and it's it's got a road to it, and it's an association, and there's a lot of amenities. It, it you're you're generally a different buyer than the, than the guy that's looking at a property that's forty acres in the sticks with road access, but there's nothing out there. Right, uh, they're right. just two different people. So, yeah. and you know what? As the market picks up, I'm getting real picky really picky about who I work with, especially not for cash because it's a transaction and that's, that's it, you know, but with, with a, a long-term note, I'm, I'm actually consciously creating my ideal customer. So I want somebody that is going to, you know, is excited about the property. They're going to appreciate the property. I know what their motivation is for the property and when they first start dealing with me, there's like this this sense of like you know we're in a partnership with this. If it's if I if, if I feel like um, like I had a guy, he just started you know and this is an eBay deal. He had a pretty good eBay rating, but then he started saying, you know, how do I know this isn't a scam? I'm like, well, you know, you can check my BBB rating here, and here's my eBay feedback. It's huge. Um, I can give you references, whatever you need. So then he's like, how do I know you own the property? I'm like, that's a great question. So I sent him a copy of the deed for him to see. So, you know, but he start, his attitude starting out was very like, it was just, he was like going to be high maintenance for me. So um, I, all I said to him was, you know, after like the fourth question that, uh, you know, I'm providing this, I'm providing that. I'm bending over backwards. He's already accepted, you know, he's already gone through the eBay system. I just said, look, I don't think this is going to work out for both of us. Um, I'm glad you like the property, but, you know, this is a long-term relationship and, you know, we're just not a good match. And I canceled the transaction and that was it. 
So yeah, that's that, funny because that's exactly. So I, I'm the same way you are, right? Um, and uh, but you have, and you I, have a dream. I, I, I sold but, it. But I, I sold it I, the next but I'll day. Find, but but I'll, but here's what's funny in in a, in a in context of an email. Okay, so so emails, people, you can read so much from a one line email. Okay. And what for do you, me, what do, you, what do you mean you can read so much from a one line? Okay, email? I'm gonna tell you. Let me let me just stop interrupting me right now. Um, when somebody emails you an inquiry about a piece of land, and they ask, "Does it have water? Does it have power? Does it have?" They'll ask you like six questions in an email. The minute I hear, like, I can almost pick out that email that, and I won't even. There's times I won't even reply to a guy because I know that the guy wants all the like. I'm not gonna if I know the guy wants water, utilities, everything else on the property. He's not going to buy from me. And I don't, I don't always do this, but I can sort of like read the lines on, on like a, you know, and it, usually it's a little bit more than one line, but I'll know this isn't a buyer. This is a tire kicker that wants something for nothing. So who wants to get a property with power, with water, with a well for, a, for two grand because they're out there. Those guys are always out looking, you know, there's guys that just want something for nothing. And right. so, well, what, so annoys, what annoys me is when it's all in my advertisement. Yeah, exactly. And then exactly. they're emailing me the same question. Questions, like, yeah. did you not read yeah. the ad? Like, this isn't like buying a, a $10, uh, you know, widget. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is this is a serious thing. This is real estate. And yeah. we're going to enter into a contract for years. Yeah. Like, please respect yeah. the, the process here and just read the entire ad before you start, you know. And, it, and in, my, in my ads, I'm very informative in my ads. Um, Mark, yours are a little bit, you know, yours are, I think yours are, you know, real confusing. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, in my ad, the very thing I do in red, I say, read, read the information below, read the terms below. I want you to know what this auction states and what this, you know, on, on the eBay ads. But I, I give, I give you in detail every piece of information. Most of the properties I'm standing on taking a picture of the property. I mean, everything I want to be, I want you to know what you're buying. And right. so, and so, yes, do I go the extra step? Do I spend the extra money to go there? Sure, I do. Why? Because number one, I want people to trust me. And number two is I don't want them to ask me questions because I don't have time to answer them. Right. So, no, and, I I, and I don't get like, I'll be honest with you, I don't get many questions at all. I don't get like, many questions either. But when I do, yeah. um, I answer them completely. But when they, you know, like this guy, like clearly there was something. I just felt like you, you get a sense, like you get a feeling like no matter what I do, this person's not going to be happy. Yeah. I, yeah. And I can't explain why that is. I don't know. I just get that sense. It's like, no, they're going to be too, it's going to take too much energy when I can get another buyer, which I did the next day. That isn't going to, you know, they're going to be appreciative. And that this is what happened. I sold yeah. the next day. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's just, uh, you know, the ebbs and flows of selling anything, it's not just real estate, it's anything. Like you have your particular buyers and, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel bad for salespeople because when they try to sell me, I just tell them, look, you better be really good because, <laughs> uh, cause I, I, you know, I'm born a salesman uh, and I'm really, you know, it's funny. I'm not a great salesman. I'm not really good at the closing side of things, but I'm getting better. Cause I think when you're more genuine in the process, like if you're really trying to just close someone to make money, uh, ge generally speaking, you're, you're not going to be super successful. No, no, no. You, you can't, you can't do that anymore. People yeah. are way too sophisticated. They know. Exactly. If you're in it for you or if you're in it for them. Yeah. And if you're in it for you, they immediately back away. You can't, I mean, today, it's yeah. not like it was, you know, years and years ago. I the mean, most the most successful car seller that I know right. is a 32-year-old guy, owns a car dealership. He is the most genuine, down-to-earth guy, and everybody loves this guy. And he, like, if you walk in and said, hey, look, man, I need, I need help. I really want this car. I only have six grand, and, and let's say he's got it for nine, but he's in it like... He's in it like fifty five hundred bucks. Right. He'd be like, "Look, sir, I, I, I care about you. I really want you to have this car. I'll give it to you for six grand." Like that's the kind of guy he is. Um, and so he does that on on, on the occasional car. Like if he sees the real need, like, "Hey, my wife is sick, or my kids are sick, or whatever," he right. boom, he just he'll make the deal happen. And so I think that's and I think you and I are similar. Like I, I'm probably a little bit different than you in that, but I'm I I I like and you I know you like helping helping people, and I do too. But I really like. Like if I see a need, I see someone like I get, I get for some reason, I don't know what, but I attract a lot of veterans and I get a lot of guys. I, I do going, hey, too. I do too. I think this, I, I think this niche attracts a lot of veterans. Yeah. And yeah. so I get a lot of these veterans that call me and, they, and I, I, they'll give me a sob story. And I'll be like, man, I dude, this guy fought for our country. I just want to help him. 
Right. And so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll work out a deal that makes sense where he's like, you know, I can't afford the five year, you know, can we keep you on the same interest rate at seven years or, you know, whatever the case is, can we drop a payment? So I'm really flexible with these guys and I'm really helpful. And I, you know, I try to help everybody that comes along and you, you can't do that everywhere, but when you're making margins like we do, you can. Yeah. I mean, I, I do a, he- I do a hero discount. So if you're a, a veteran, you're in the, you're active in the military, you're a teacher or a doctor or a firefighter, then you get a discount. I think it's I think it's ten percent. Um, as just like a small that's, token. That's of, that's of the kind of that's discrimination, Mark. It's not discrimination. It's it's <laughs> it's acknowledging, you know, uh, your service. I'm so um, so you know so I do that, and um, you know, and my mindset is with anyone I'm dealing with, I'm not dealing with you, right? It's not Duran and I. It's I'm I'm trying to get not just Duran's business, I'm trying to get Duran's business and everyone he knows so that when he's done, when we're do, done transacting, he will feel very comfortable and confident referring me to other people. If at the end of that transaction, there's no referral, there's no, you know, shout up, you know, shout out on Facebook. This guy was great, you know, straight shooter, made it so easy to buy property then I've done something wrong in the process. That's my goal with every transaction. And if I feel that I'm not getting that rapport, then either I'm doing something wrong or I've, or I've got a customer that we're just not gonna, we're just not gonna hit it off and I'll be better off spending my energy somewhere else. Yep, yep. And, and you know, it's interesting too, is, is if, you, if you play the role of non-salesman and just information, uh, what's like, you know, just, just giving the information over about a piece of property, if, right. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not in the business of going, Hey, sir, you got an hour to close the deal or Hey, sir, I need to know now because you know, I, I, I just don't operate that way, but I'll have a, I'll have somebody come and say, Hey, look, I, I like this property, but I'm looking at five others. Great, sir. Right. Just want to let you know, uh, you know, this is a little bit about our business, about me. Um, if I can answer any questions, I'm, and, and I literally, I will email back within six hours, like I, I, or four hours, whatever. If, as long as I'm not bit, like too busy, like my mailbox right now has one email in it right now. My, I am super good. And that's one thing we should talk about too yeah. is communication in this business is absolutely key. Why? Because people are emotional and when people want something and they're in that mode of buying, it's, it, communication is key. If it, you, know, you keep that communication log going and that dialogue going for one day, two days, three days and not leave a gap of three days and not communicate with them, you're not going to sell them. No, I know. The and, and you know. You know the old saying, no one buys from a hungry salesman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but, you know, I am going to disagree with you, though, about getting r- right back to people right away. We've talked about this. Yeah. I mean, I think you should just schedule, you know, a time either they're in the morning or, or actually for me, my mornings are really productive. I want to I want to get my wigs out of the way, my wildly important goals. And then in the afternoon, I respond to phone calls and emails and I, I set aside typically a half hour to, to 50 minutes, depending on that day to get it all out of the inbox and, yeah. and get everything done. So I, yeah, but I'm not, I don't want to have my attention diverted by other people. I want to be yeah. completely in control of my time. Yeah. And you know, I, I, one of the things I told you, I mentioned recently that I started doing is I, I have, I've tried to find that, that mode of stability for me to like focus. And, and like you said, that, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, emailing for me is tough because I always have so many different emails and I've unfortunately now that I, that I'm s- that I have so much going on, it's easier for me now to say, you know what? I'd love to hang out with you, but I'm super busy. Let's talk in January. Right. And generally I've never done that before. I mean, I, I genuinely like helping people or by, you know, I feel like when I'm helping someone, someone's helping me, right? Because I learn something every time I sit down with somebody, I don't care if they're a bum on the street or they're you know, a billionaire. I enjoy talking to people right. um, and, and everybody teaches me something. So, um, so, so for me now, I'm learning, like, I, I canceled Facebook. I'm focusing on what is most important. And Facebook for me was kind of an out for, you know, for many different things. Like, I, when I see silly things going on, I just get super frustrated. And it's, and it's an easier, it's an easy, it's easier for me to go, hey, you know what? I just don't agree with the way economically things are going, you know, politically where things are going, you know, so, but I, I'm learning that those little things can take your brain away, even if it's for like 10 seconds, can take your brain away from, from what you need to do, which is focusing on what's in front of you. So, right, right. So, and even though there's some aspects of social media that need to be integrated into your marketing process, turning that, turning off Facebook uh, is super, to me is super helpful because now 
I have, I don't, that's like just one thing off my plate. I don't have to worry about, I don't care. And, uh, and I can, I can, I can activate the account if I need to do something on the marketing side for reserve land or for land hub. But at, 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 in the meantime, and those are still running, but for me personally, I'm not there. Right. Right. I'm, I'm trying to find a program that, uh, that I think would be super helpful for you that, um, I can't think of it. I mean, it was really cool. Like, is it called, is it called lithium.com? No. What, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, no. I, it's, it's like, it the, like this, uh, the salesperson would send it to me and she would like, it was, it would like kind of automate on her calendar, my calendar, our, our consultation or our meeting time. It was cool. It was really cool. And I, I can't find it, but, um, now I'm getting distracted trying to find this thing. But it, when you're talking, it made me think of that. Like, here's a gr here's a great w way to like schedule meetings. Yeah, um, I'll find it. I'll find it. No worries. Yeah. But uh, no, and, and and the difference between you and I is like you're generally scheduling meetings that are focused on. Oh, he, oh I found it. Timedriver.com. Time Boom. driver. Okay. Timedriver.com. I don't know if it's free. It probably isn't. I'm gonna type it out. Everything's free, Mark. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, their competition's probably free. So you could find something similar. But uh, it, it's, it's a neat little program if you check it out. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a, take a peek at it. So um, Time Driver, I, it took me to timetrade.com, same thing? Maybe. I mean, it was a while ago that okay. we spoke. Yeah, it's timetrade.com now. So time interesting. Trade. okay. So anyway, uh, it says online appointments, getting the software to fit your business. Yeah. Interesting. I'll take a peek at that. So um, For a busy guy like you. Yeah, you know what though? I, I will tell you, I come and it, here's this here's the sickening thing about this business, Mark, is that if I take three steps away and then I close two or three to deal, like I've closed a few deals this week, I go, gosh, what am I thinking? You know, because look, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you sell cars or you sell boats or you sell islands. I don't care what you do. Um, at after a certain period of time, you just kind of are like, man, I'm burnt out. And it has nothing to do with the business, just like it's not the money. It's just right. like, you know, it's like, hi, we've been doing this for 15 years. At some point, you're like, man, can I do something else? And then you realize, I actually like the business. I like the <laughs> I know, it's great. Out. And then I go, I make more money at this than I do anything else. So why do I fo take my focus away? Or, you know, or you at some level utilizing those aspects into like right. the software that I'm building with Landhub. So, well, we, so you know, we, we've talked about this. And, yes. and I, I mean, we talked about this. I can't find a better business model than what we're doing. I can't. That but being you're said, you're teaching everybody how to do it, so we're stuck now. What do we, Mark? What are you doing? No, no. But that being said, like we, we <laughs> but you know, but we need a different challenge, like because we've been doing it so long. We've got the passive income coming in. It's not about the money anymore. Yeah. It's fun, but we. I think. I think we're always driving ourselves for a different challenge. So for me, you know, land geek makes sense because it makes me better at buying and selling land because now I'm teaching it, right? Yeah. And so it just, it just kind of makes me better and, I, it, and it feels great to help people i mean because you don't get that same uh sense of i don't know accomplishment when you sell a piece of property it's more i don't know do you get that feeling it's it's a flatter feeling than when you know someone calls you up and says i'm gonna make one hundred fifty thousand dollars this year because of you yeah like that's yeah, no, life-changing you know I, I, as opposed I, to somebody saying hey i just got five acres from you thanks yeah, no, I agree. I agree that certainly, you know, as we, and as we start getting into these, you know, live seminars that Mark and I will probably end up traveling around the country and doing. Well, um, not if, probably we're doing it. We, we oh, just have to schedule them. Okay, sorry, yeah. we're doing them. Yeah. Um, I think that that you know, kind of, you know, conveying that 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 whole thing of being able to help people, like standing in a seminar, like like we don't have an agenda other than want we want to help you guys, uh, you know, learn from you know our mistakes and then also learn, you know, and. Uh, ideas on how to take a business and make money um, from from real estate. So, uh, you know, I think that 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 is it's super fulfilling to, to walk away and go, gosh, you know what, the, the 100 people in the room, all of them really enjoyed listening to what you and I had to say. And they walked, they each walked away with something that was that was real, they could take back whether it was for real estate or whether it was for being a registered nurse, whatever it is, you take something out of listening to people who have done something in a particular industry and you try to implement that into what you do in your life. So. Exactly, exactly. All right, now it's time. I've already given out, what, two great tips and that's not even my tip of the day. Maybe it should be. But, uh, Duran, what's your yep. tip of the week? Okay, so I don't know if I've given this one out. I don't think I have. 
we've talked about contracts and all sorts of different websites that you can make contracts. I think we talked about, um, what was that called? Rocket. Um, gosh, now I forget the name of that. Yeah. Website. Yeah. Rocket okay. lawyer. Rocket, rocket, what, rocket again? lawyer.com. Rocket what? Ro- rocket lawyer. Um, yes, rocketlawyer.com. Yeah. Um, so there's a website called legalzoom.com. And legalzoom, you've probably heard of, you've seen ads everywhere, but it's a very good place. If you're starting a business and you need forms or you need um, you need to build, you need an LLC, would you, whatever. You, you, you would buy an LLC off legalzoom? I just did. You did? How much yeah. did it cost? 300 bucks. Really? Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. 350 bucks, I mean. Um, so, I did, yeah, that's pretty good. So you, you're going to have to make some changes within the operating agreement or do some tweaks to it. But to, to get it quickly done, to just make, you know, I think I got it in a couple of weeks. But you, it's, for me, LegalZoom, like you can, it kind of has a lot and it takes a lot of the guessing work out. Like a lot of people will do it for 350 bucks uh, and, or 400 bucks. But the way it's done on their site, like they ask you a ton of questions. It's all set up. It's just really simple. So I, I think, although it's probably a pretty pathetic tip of the day because everyone probably knows who they are. Yeah, but you know what? I disagree with that. I think it's a great tip because you're using it. Yeah. So And, and you've had experience with it. Where I've, I've never done it that way. I've always gone to my local real estate attorney here and be like, hey, I need an LLC. Yeah. And he just I like, mean, goes, they, look, let's be honest with you. They're, they're, every attorney that you guys use, use, generally uses a boilerplate contract. And, and in those boilerplate contracts, they'll make six changes in that boilerplate contract, like Mark and I do with our contracts. It's not rocket science. Mark and I don't write our contracts. We're not attorneys. We have an attorney write our contract, and all we do is change the number and the names and the address uh, and a couple and a little bit of the legal description and the information, and or our office managers handle what handle that aspect. And and it's not and, and so these but these attorneys will charge you for three hours on a, on a document that that takes them fifteen minutes. Right. So it's not fair, and that's why I like. I mean, that's why I like. Legal. But even then, I mean, like LegalZoom to me, what they're doing is they're they're doing the same thing. Except they just automate the process, and they know that if everyone else charges you seven hundred bucks, they can charge you three hundred. You can they can still get away with it. Um, but I was talking to an attorney, and funny enough, Mark, I was talking to an attorney recently, and he's like, you know what? I worked for a firm. I was doing all this work. They were paying me seventy bucks an hour, and they were charging three fifty. Yeah. And I was that's I mean, talk about a broken industry. It's like, man, there's so many attorneys out there that just want to that want business, that want to work on their own. But because all these big firms are sort of out there pushing in marketing, it's so hard for them to get business. Um, even if they try to charge eighty bucks or hundred bucks an hour. Talk. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. LegalZoom.com. I, I love that uh, tip. All right. So my tip of the week is, hey, look, money isn't that important anymore. They're printing more of it every day. But you know what they're not making any more of? Time. We only have limited time. To help you manage your time is a new site, which is called, and, and Jeff has been using Simpleology.com, by the way, to help him get stuff done. And he loves it. I haven't been doing it that much. But uh, I am going to check out a free site, and then they have an, uh, an upsell plan. It's called wonderlist.com. Check it out. W-U, not like Wonder Bread, but Wonder, like a wonderkind. W-U-N-D-E-R-L-I-S-T.com. It's going to help you manage your time. And uh, check it out. Leave us some feedback. You know what? Leave us some feedback. Email me uh, and uh, or email Duran. Let us know if you like the podcast. If you hate the podcast, just let us know what's going on. Uh, you know, rate us on iTunes. So um, every time I talk to Duran, he's like, "What are the stats? How many people we have it going on?" I don't care. What are you talking you about? Care. I don't care. You, you, you know, know what? Every time, every got, time I podcast, it's just we like, got this two worth people my time? listening. To this, we got two people listening to the podcast. You know what? You two people, I love you. I thank you, and I don't care. In fact, if you both go away, I'll podcast to nobody. Why? Because I like to hear Mark talk. Yeah, whatever. All right. Just send us some love. <laughs> Rate us on iTunes. Uh, if you want to learn more, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Give Duran some love. Buy some wholesale land at reserveland.com. Uh, is Landhub ready to, to get Land Hub's, started? Yep. Landhub's launched. We're just working. In fact, I'm just hiring a couple more developers as we speak. Go so. to landhub.com. Uh, if you got property, list your property there. And Look, if, you, if Duran doesn't have anything you want, go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com and invest in some wholesale land with me. And uh, Duran, are you good? You got anything else you want to talk about?
I think I'm good, dude. I think uh, all is good. All is good here. The weather is amazing. I think there's a huge cold front. I was just watching reading this this morning. There's a massive cold front coming over the nor- like a northeaster. Uh-huh. You know, I don't know what they call it. Nor'easter. I don't know what they call those things. But anyway, I just was watching this morning. It's coming over Canada and then coming down into the East Coast, and it's going to be a monster. Um, like like crazy. I heard that it was like free- there was that nor'easter was going to create freezing temperatures in Guatemala from this nor'easter. It's like something crazy. Right. Um, so right. anyway, pretty interesting. But yeah, so anyway, stay warm. Uh, in San Diego here, it should be 70 all weekend. So I don't, uh, you know, think it, just really keep me in your thoughts and your prayers um, that I don't get, you know, too warm to go over here. Yeah, you, exactly. Everyone in the northeast is, is you know, feeling badly for you. We're all, we're all playing the <laughs> smallest violin in the world. I appreciate that. All right, Dran, thanks. This is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.